Okay, so in this lecture, uh, we're going to discuss the introduction for the skeletal system. And this is uh, going over content that's in exercise eight. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the divisions of the skeletal system. So the skeletal system is divided into two main, uh, two main parts. So you have the axial and you have the appendicular. So the axial includes the skull, it includes the vertebral column, and it also includes the sacrum as well as the uh, rib cage. <coughs> and so everything else, that's what is included in the appendicular skeleton. And so that includes the upper limb as well as the uh, lower limb. And so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over uh, all the different uh, bones here uh, for, the, for the skeleton and then um, start going over uh, some of the other concepts uh, as far as you know, how to go about um, classifying bones and going over some of the um, microanatomy of the bone. Okay, so starting off here, we have the skull, and uh, within, the, you have the, within the skull you have the cranium. So the cranium is the part that, that's where the brain is. And then you also have the, uh, the facial bones, which are, which are here. And then uh, this structure is, that's what's known as the mandible. Okay, uh, so I want to also point out the, the difference between ver, um, vertebra versus vertebrae. So when we say vertebra, what we're just referring to is like each individual one. But when we say vertebrae, we're talking about the specific segments. So for instance, you have the thoracic vertebrae, you have so it's cervical, it's thoracic, and then it's the lumbar vertebrae. Okay, so that's the the difference. Okay, so we've already um, identified the ribs and then this part right here, these are what's known as the costal cartilage of the ribs. So you have the costal cartilages which attaches to the sternum. So this is the sternum, this is the clavicle, and then this is the scapula. So the scapula is, let me turn them around this way, so the scapula is here on the back side. Okay. So now let's um, work our way down. So this is the sacrum, and this is the uh, what's known as the pelvis. Okay, so the pelvis has three regions. So you have the ilium, which is here. You have the ischium, which is here on the, the back. And then you have the, the pubic region, or the, the pubis of the, of the pelvis. All right, so we have did so most of this part. So now let's um, work our way back up. So what bone is this one here? Humerus. Yeah, this is the humerus. And then the bone that directly articulates with the humerus, this is what's known as the ulna. So you have the ulna, and then you have the radius. And then uh, here in the hand, so if you, you can even put your you know, hand around your wrist. So what you're grabbing right there, though, that's where your, your carpal bones are, are found. So it's a little bit lower here. So. You have your carpal bones, and then you have your metacarpals, which are here, and then you have the phalanges. Uh, so phalanges. And then uh, one other thing I wanted to also point out is that, <clears throat> so whenever I'm standing in the anatomical position, so palms out in this way, the ulna is what is medial. So the ulna is here, and then the radius is what's lateral. But then when I turn it over like that, the radius is coming over the ulna. And so you can even look at, y'all see that, um, the x-ray there, the skeleton. So see how he's, it's what's called pronation when you pronate. So that's the orientation. That's why it looks different compared to if he was uh, just standing like this in an anatomical position. Okay, so that's for um, here the, low, the upper extremity. And then we talked about the pelvis. So now let's move down here. So this is what's known as the femur. This is the patella. And what is this bone that's directly articulating with the femur? Tibia. The tibia. And then we have this here, which is lateral. This is the fibula. So you have the fibula. And then you have, uh, so this is the calcaneus, the bottom part of the foot. And then you have the tarsals, the metatarsals, and then the phalanges. So make sure that you keep the, the tarsals and the carpals, keep them straight. I've had a student, uh, sh she told me that the way she remembers them is like tarsals near the toes. So real simple, and just to uh, remember them, uh, keep them straight. 
Okay. So that's pretty much all the bones uh, here in our skeleton. So the next thing uh, I want to talk about is some of the different the cartilages. So you have three types of cartilages. We have elastic, we have hyaline, and we also have fibrocartilage. And so these cartilages are found in different regions. And so what's in between the vertebrae or the vertebra, this is what's known as the intervertebral disc. So the intervertebral disc, that's, they're composed of fibrocartilage. And uh, fibrocartilage is also found here with the, where the pubic symphysis is. And does anyone, can y'all tell me the function for um, fibrocartilage? Exactly. It's, a, it's for shock absorption because uh, think about it. That's why they're in between each of these vertebrae. So you just think about like the force of gravity. And so um, another thing about these, the intervertebral disc is that as we get older, you know, we start to shrink. And so the reason that we start to shrink is because the intervertebral disc, they'll start to degenerate. And so they'll get you know, more thin. And so as a result, right, we shrink some. We're not as tall as we uh, used to be. Okay, so that's um, fibrocartilage. We also have what's known as hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is found here where the, um, the costal cartilage of, of the ribs are. And that is to um, resist uh, compressive forces uh, compared to um, like a shock absorption, which was the, the fibrocartilage. And then another example is the, um, for the ear, right? What type of cartilage is found in the ear? Elastic, elastic yes. Yeah. So we have elastic cartilage, which is uh, found within the ear. Okay, so that's uh, for all the, the cartilage. And the next thing we need to discuss is the classification of bones. So we can classify uh, bones into four main categories. So you have um, long bones, you have short bones, you also have um, irregular, so long, short, um, irregular, and uh, so this is a, what bone is this right here? This is the humerus, so what type of bone would this be? Yeah, so this would be a, a long bone. So this would be a long bone. These, both of these are long, this is long. Um, the ones here on the lower extremity right, these are long. And then some of the short ones, so you have the carpals. So the carpals are short. Also the, the tarsals are short. And um, also the patella. Okay, so another uh, type of bone we have is um, irregular. So the regular types, so the vertebrae, those are considered, um, those are considered irregular. And then we also have what's known as flat bones. So flat bones, if you look at the, so they have the scapula, you also have the ribs, which are flat bones, including the, the sternum. Okay. Uh, some of the other irregular bones. So if you look here, this is a skull, and it's divided into all the different uh, parts, different components, um, you know, with all these different colors and stuff. So for instance, um, what type of bone do you think this would be? Or this one? Is it, is it short? Is it long? Is it flat? It's irregular, right? Look at the, it's a different shape. So we categorize the rest of the ones that, you know, aren't the short, the long, and everything into irregular. Okay, so um, that's for the different types of uh, bone classifications. So the next thing uh, that we need to discuss is what's uh, the bone markings. Okay, so the significance of bone markings is that uh, once we start getting to muscles, we'll start to learn where these muscles attach to. And we'll also learn where these uh, ligaments attach because that's um, the significance as far as like, for instance here, this is what's known as the mastoid process. And so a, a muscle known as the sternocleidomastoid attaches here. So that's why we're going out of the way to learn all of these different processes. And then um, even inside the skull, so once we start to get into the cranial nerves, so, so that's in the nervous system, we'll learn everything that passes through here. We'll learn some of the blood vessels that are passing through here. Um, so this is why you know, it's very important that we have a good understanding of this as we're um, moving forward. Okay, so let's um, go over some of the uh, basic landmarks and let's give some examples here. All right, so I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer. <clears throat> so the first one we have 
is what's known as a fissure. So a fissure is a slit-like opening, and you can see the, the probe is going through that, through the fissure. So you have uh, the fissure, you also have your, what's known as foramen, so your mental foramen, right, like in your thinking, you know. So mental foramen, both of these are right here. Uh, we also have, I already mentioned this one earlier, uh, this is what's known as a process, so this is the uh, mastoid process, and then um, this is what's known as a, a ramus, so this is the mandible, so this is the ramus of the mandible. It's um, an arm-like uh, structure there. Okay, so let's see, what are some of the other ones? You also have what's known as um, fossa. So the fossa are right here, this is the occipital fossa because it's the back part of the skull. And then uh, you also have condyles. So these are condyles right here. They're kind of like flat, flat shaped. Uh, it's an articular surface. And then this large hole that's here, uh, this is what's known as the foramen magnum. So magnum is large, so the frame and magnum. Okay, so let's see here. So I look process. Yeah. Okay, so let's put this one down and move onward to the femur. Okay, so for the femur, what you're looking at, this is an anterior view of, of the femur. This is a posterior view. So there's only two trochanters that you have. So you have a greater trochanter, which is this one here on top, and then the lesser trochanter is here on the bottom. Uh, we also have what's known as a line. So you have lines, and then you also have what's known as uh, crest. So they're both kind of similar. They're like narrow ridges of bone. The difference is like how prominent they are. So this is what's known as the intertrochanteric line because it's uh, in between um, both of the, the greater and the lesser trochanter. But then if we compare that with the pelvis, so this is a crest. So this is the iliac crest. So they're both narrow ridges of bone. The difference is that uh, one is more prominent than the other. Okay, so earlier I showed you on the skull the occipital condyles, remember, on the, at the base of the skull? And so both of these, these are also known as condyles, but uh, we can use directional terms like we've learned earlier, right? So medial, I know this is medial because of um, this is the head of the femur which um, directly articulates with the acetabulum of the pelvis. So this is the medial condyle and then this is the, the lateral condyle. And so something that's above a condyle, we know that as an epicondyle. So that's up here. And then we also have uh, what's known as tubercles. So one of the examples is, which is here, so this is medial, so it's known as the adductor tubercle. Uh, one of the muscles, the adductor, that's what uh, attaches there. Okay, so that's it for this. And then let's move on to, so this here is one of the hip bones. Uh, so this is like the whole entire pelvis structure. So this is just one of them. Okay, so let's look at, so this, process back here. So this is known as a spine. So this is the ischial spine. And then um, this part right here, uh, this is what we know uh, as a notch. So this is the sciatic notch. So you can compare the sciatic notch with uh, what's on the, the head, on the skull. So this is the mandibular notch. So very, uh, very similar. We're just naming them based off of the location. Okay, and so then uh, the last one I wanted to point out is here on the bottom. So this is uh, ischial tuberosity. This is what I said earlier. Earlier, This is uh, what you're sitting on. Okay. So bone markings, <coughs> the different regions of the skull. So now the, the last thing that we need to go over. So yeah, I'll go over this last. So the last thing is the bone microanatomy. Okay, so uh, before we like get into all the details of like everything that's here, we need to know some of like the basic parts and where we're at. Okay, so the first thing is, so peri means around. When we say like osteum, we're referring to bone. So if we say peri, that means 
around, so it's around the bone. So the periosteum, that's what this layer is right here. So you have the periosteum, and then you have two main types of bone. So you have a compact bone, which is here, and then you have the spongy bone, which is um, seen here. Okay, so we have the different types of bone. So now let's, um, one other thing is, so the fundamental unit of bone is what's known as an osteon. So if you look at the compact bone, you'll see these little circles. So you see those circles right there? So that's what's known as the osteon. That's the fundamental unit. Okay, so let's um, work our way this way and start talking about some of the details. So the periosteum, what that's composed of is dense irregular um, connective tissue. So you have dense irregular connective tissue and then these little blue um, perforating fibers here, that's what they're called. These uh, perforating fibers, they're composed of collagen. Okay, so that's what's kind of like, think of it kind of like spider webs, it's kind of like anchoring it here to the, to the compact bone. So then uh, if we look at, so if you kind of look at the model, you'll see that they bring the, the osteon up and you can see like all of the different uh, layers. It kind of looks like a, like a wedding cake, I guess you could say. Uh, but um, <clears throat> these little spider-like structures here, that's what's known as the lacunae. So what sits inside the lacunae, that's the osteocytes. So osteo is bone, site is cell. So the osteocytes are found in there. And then we also have, if you can see like all these like individual um, portions here, these are what's known as the lamella. So you have the lamella, and then the little lines that are in between them, those are the collagen fibers that are keeping them all together. It's keeping all of that uh, bone together. Okay, um, so the next thing that I wanna point out is some of the uh, blood vessels and stuff that are shown here. So here in the middle, this is what's known as, so the central canal. So the central canal is found here, and um, that's where the, the blood vessels and nerves also pass through, pass through there. But then if we look at it from the lateral view, uh, we'll see that this is the, what's known as the perforating canals. So the perforating canals, that's what leads to the central canal. Okay, so um, the next thing is that what's in between each of these osteon is what's known as the interstitial lamella. So that, that's what's in between each of them. And then um, the last part, <clears throat> so this is the, I already said earlier that this is the spongy bone. And we learned what the periosteum was here on the outside. But then the endosteum is this part that's covering the, the spongy bone. And the endosteum is also found uh, here in the, in the middle, um, which like where the central canal is. So that's another location for the, um, for the periosteum. Okay, so then what's here in red, what's in between all of, the <clears throat> um, all of the spongy bone, this is the red bone marrow. And so the process that occurs within the red bone marrow is uh, hema, uh, hematopoiesis, so that's the production of red blood cells. Okay, so uh, the next thing I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about was the osteocyte. So how do we get the formation of osteocytes, and then what is the composition of bone? So bone is uh, primarily composed of the calcium, uh, calcium phosphate salts, and then there's also, um, it's made of collagen fibers. And so in order for, you know, to get the mature form of bone, what happens is the osteoblast, that's what develops into osteocytes. So these osteoblasts, they'll secrete all of, um, they'll secrete the collagen and they'll secrete all the, um, all the calcium uh, phosphate uh, crystals. And so once they're done like secreting everything and they're kind of like trapped in that area, they get stuck there. And so that's when they develop into what's known as an osteocyte. Okay. So that should do it for um, this model. Uh, one other thing was um, these individual uh, lines here. And so uh, these individual lines, 
right here coming up. This is what's known as the uh, circumferential uh, lamella. So that's what's going up here on the, on the outside of the bone that's next to the um, per, uh, periosteum. Okay, so last topic. I want to talk about bone growth. <clears throat> and so um, once we hit puberty, we hit what's known as our growth spurt. And so what happens is we have what's known as the epiphyseal line. So the epiphyseal line is found here. So this is the epiphysis of the bone and this is the diaphysis. And so as we hit our growth spurt, what happens is the bone will start to grow in this direction. So it'll push the epiphysis up this way. And so our bones will um, lengthen. Okay. All right, so that's it for this lecture. Are there any questions?